Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Matra. So, let begins with our today's session. If you look at the previous session, these are the topics we have talked about. We have seen what market is and market is basically an interaction between the buyers and seller where the exchange of goods and services takes place at a given price. Right. And then thereafter we have talked about the market structure, the morphology of market, what are the different features and conditions we have in different market structure, where we have talked about perfect competition, monopoly market, monopolistic competitive market as well as oligopoly market. So these are the different forms of market which were covered in our previous session and besides this we have also talked about duopoly market as well as monopsony. So, we can just uh, make a quick recall of our discussion in our previous session. Perfect competition is a market or this is a market structure where we have very large number of buyers and seller and this is the market which we are going to cover here in our today's session in detail, how we are going to determine the price and output in short run as well as in the long run. Whereas if we talk about monopoly market, monopoly is a market structure where there is a single seller, right? And in this market, the product which he, uh, you know, monopolist is selling is a single uh, seller. He is the single seller and the product is also single. He does not have a close substitute for his commodity. And in this market, there is a restrictive entry as well. And then we have also talked about different types of monopoly, how uh, we generate or uh, how people are getting this monopoly power. That can be because of the natural reason, that can be because of uh, regional, uh, you know, monopolies are also there economic monopolies are also there and people have this monopoly power because of legal aspects as well, right? So those were the different types of monopolies which were covered and we have talked about the very important feature of this monopoly market that is the price discrimination, right? So price discrimination is an art of selling a same commodity to different people at different prices and to do this uh, there are certain conditions which are required like uh, one who has a control over the supply of the market, uh, that, that, that person is only capable of discriminating among the prices, right? One should be able to divide their market in uh, more than one or two markets and their, these markets should have different elasticities, right? So this price discrimination concept was discussed and then we have seen this monopolistic competitive market which is actually a combination of perfect competition and monopoly because in this the sellers have to compete because the products which they are selling are of heterogeneous nature and uh, we do have the close substitutes of our commodity but each seller has their own loyal customer because they have their own brands in the market. So they have a little sort of monopoly and at the same time they were also competing. So monopoly competitive market is a market where the sellers are, uh, usually compete on the basis of their product rather than on the basis of their prices. And then we have talked about this oligopoly market structure which says that here in this market we have few dominant player and here we have seen one important characteristic that was interdependence, right? As because we have very few players in this market and the products which they are producing can be homogeneous, can be heterogeneous. So if the oligopoly firms are having the homogeneous product then we give it as a name of pure oligopoly and if they are producing the different product we used to call it as an differentiated oligopoly, right? So here there is an interdependence of the firm. So whatever the decision you usually make, they take into account uh, what uh, will be the impact of the competitor firms on that decision, right? And then we have duopoly market. Duopoly like duo means two. When we have two sellers in the market, uh, right, that, that particular market form is called as duopoly. And then we have monopsony also which is an opposite condition of monopoly. In monopoly we have a single seller whereas 
in one of Sony we have single wire. So, this is all about our market structure where we have got a clear understanding of these market forms. Now, in our today's session let us look at the learning objectives what we are going to talk about. Here in this session you will be able to examine the nature of perfect competitive market and you will also understand how this market and the firm demands under the perfect competition right. How do we find out uh, the price uh, what will be the price under perfect competition since this is the market where sellers does not determine the prices they take the market uh, prices from the market forces. So, that you will be able to understand and you will also be able to analyze the pricing and the output determination or the decisions were taken under the perfect competitive market in short run as well as in the long run because these are the two important time frame right. So, a uh, 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 you know seller in the perfect competitive market has to make sure how much they will be producing at what price they should be producing so that they would be able to optimize uh, their resources and to have maximum uh, results out of it right. So, let us begin with that. Uh, so, here we have the features and conditions of perfect competitive market just have a quick review of uh, these features so that we can understand it once again. We have large number of buyers and seller right this is the market where the number of buyers and sellers are very large and I have given few example like you can say that uh, you know uh, share market is an example of perfect competitive market unskilled labor market is again a market uh, which is co which comes under this perfect competition. But yes that is also true that this market is having more of theoretical and hypothetical uh, you know market it is. So, here we have large number of buyers and seller. Then we have discussed that this market is having an homogeneous product that means the seller who are working under this perfect competitive uh, market the products which they are selling they are of similar nature they are identical to each other there is no difference among the product right. Consumer also have a perfect knowledge about the market condition. So, here seller cannot charge the prices by telling the consumer that their product is better than the other because here the consumers are having complete knowledge regarding the prices as well as the quality of the product. Here in this market there is a freedom of entry and freedom of exit this is an unrestricted area right if any new seller wants to enter into this market they can easily enter and at any point of time if they are not able to survive in this market or not able to make out the profit right they can easily exit from this market. Then we have price taker yes again this is a very important point which we need to take into account that the firms and a perfect competitive market are the price taker and they take the prices from the market based on those prices they are selling their commodity. So, here again it is important for this perfect competitive seller that they should be focusing on the cost because this is the market where they cannot increase the price or they cannot determine the prices of their commodity whatever will be the demand and supply in the market accordingly they have to price their commodity. So, if they want to increase their profit margin they have to work on the cost how they can reduce the cost of their production to increase the margin of their profit. Then there is a perfect mobility of factors of production and the factors of production are those factors which are used in the process of production like we have labor right. So, we have entrepreneur since all the firms under this perfect competitive market are producing identical products they are they are producing the same product. So, same set of skills are being required by all the employers right. So, the factors of production have perfect mobility they can move from one seller to the another right and here in this uh, market we have perfectly elastic demand curve right. So, demand curve here is perfectly elastic which is going to be discussed further in our uh, this session itself right where we will see how we will determine this perfectly elastic demand curve which is in a horizontal form you can say it is parallel to the x axis. And there are few conditions also to study this perfect competitive market. So, those assumptions are like here we assume that transportation cost is absent ok while understanding this market clearly and to uh, get the result out of this market we have assumed that in this market there is an absence of transportation cost as well as we assume that there is no government intervention government is not playing any active role in this perfect competitive market. So, this is the basic understanding we have for this perfect competitive market. Now, let us move further 
to understand how prices are being determined since the firms under this perfect competitive market are the price taker. So, like I said here the price are being determined based on demand and supply. So, here you can see in this curve we are talking about the demand curve which is a downward sloping curve here you can see denoted by D and D on the x axis we have quantity and on the y axis we are representing the price right. So, you need to understand this also on the x axis we always keep that thing which is a dependent variable right dependent variable are always being placed on the x axis and on the y axis we always place independent variable. So, this D D curve represents the demand curve and S S curve represents the supply curve right and the point where they both are in equilibrium right where they, where they are same. So, that point basically determine the prices under perfect competition. So, O P will be the price uh, to sell this O Q output in this market right and this is the price which every seller is going to keep for their commodity. And you can say that when the demand is equal to the supply that point is actually an equilibrium point right here in this at this point you can say that market is an equilibrium phase. So, whatever the changes are going to take place in the demand as well as in the supply of the product that will change the prices like here on the right side you can see. I am trying to make you understand if there is a change in the supply right. So, here we have the supply curve and demand curve and we have seen that T was your equilibrium point and OP was the price for selling OQ quantity. Now, suppose if the supply increases, when the supply increases right supply curve shift towards right and this shift takes place because of change in the factors other than price right because of any reason right the factors which affect the supply of the commodity like number of firms like state of technology is one of the determinant which affect the supply government policies also affects the supply right. So, whatever may be the reason if any because of any reason if the supply increases. So, let us say supply curve shift towards right and this S S is the new supply curve right. So, you can see being the demand same if you are understanding the demand remains the same and supply increases. So, what will happen the price of the commodity will reduce now price will shift to P O because being the supply more and keeping the same demand right this is the demand curve which was uh, earlier there it was and now with the change in the supply you can see the price will reduce in the market ok. So, this is how the price will change it is not that price will not change in this market they will change because of change in the market forces that is demand and supply. If suppose for some reason supply curve uh, or demand increases right demand increases. So, demand curve you can see that demand is shifting from D to uh, this, this curve right which is shown here with the dotted line right keeping the same supply and when the demand increases you can see that here the price will also increase right. So, now the price will be OP1 in the market because of shift in the demand taking place and supply remains the same. So, this is how we basically try to understand the interaction between the demand and supply right. So, whenever there will be a change if supply increases keeping the demand same right or if supply decreases keeping the demand same or if both are increasing or if both are decreasing right. So, whatever the change has been taking place in these forces that will change the price in the market right. So, this is how we determine the price under perfect competition. Now, moving ahead let us also see uh, one of the point which we have seen and we have said that under this perfect competitive market the demand curve is perfectly elastic. So, how do we calculate this demand curve under this perfect competitive market? So, let us see again with the help of this uh, market forces right. Suppose this is the demand curve which is representing the downward sloping curve and this is our supply curve. So, this is the equilibrium point and this is the point uh, where we are determining the prices under perfect competition. OQ is the output which we are selling and OP is the price which we are taking right. So, how are we representing the demand curve under this perfect competition? If we draw the straight line from this you can see that this is the demand curve for the perfect competitive market. So, OP is the price because we have taken it from the market based on the interaction of demand and supply. So, this will be the price and this on this price there can be the different quantities which can be sold under perfect 
competitive de uh, competition depending upon the demand in the market right so this is how we uh, find out the demand curve this is called as average revenue curve and you, this is also uh, been considered to be as in marginal revenue curve because here the price remain constant so average revenue will be constant therefore the marginal revenue will be constant this pl line denotes your demand curve right so this is how we represent the perfectly elastic demand in the perfect competition now let us look at the determination of output or firm's equilibrium like i said perfect competitive market is a market where the firms are the price taker so they always focus on their equilibrium point they want to produce up to the point where they will be having a lesser cost so that they would be able to increase their profit margin so how are they going to determine the prices uh, output right determination of price we have already seen the determination of price under this market takes place with the interaction of demand and supply now how the determination of output is going to uh, taken up and where the firm is going to reach up their equilibrium point that is what we are going to understand in short run as well as in the long run so since the uh, firm in the perfectly competitive market are the price taker and they adjust their level of output to maximize its profit right so they are left with only one choice where they need to adjust their output so that they would be able to increase their profit margin so the aim of any producer is to maximize the profit and in other words you can say that they like to produce the output which gives them the maximum profit or the minimum losses so this is the consideration they keep right so therefore firms determine uh, their maximum profit output which is the equilibrium point of the firm with the interaction of individual cost curves as well as the revenue curves so as we know that the firms maximize minimum profit will be at the point where marginal cost curve will cut the marginal revenue curve from below so we have seen this these two things that we have marginal cost and we have marginal revenue right so like i said uh, i have shown you the demand curve where we have stated that uh, the average revenue in the perfect competitive market is constant and because of the average revenue curve we have constant average revenue curve therefore our marginal revenue will always remain same because what is marginal revenue marginal revenue is the additional revenue right if you are producing one ex or selling one extra unit and and because of that if you are getting any extra revenue right additional revenue you are getting that is called as marginal revenue so since average revenue is constant in the perfect competitive market the marginal revenue will always be constant right and at the point where the marginal cost curve cuts the marginal revenue curve from below right that point is the equilibrium point okay so to produce up to that point firm will be able to maximize their output and profit as well right so under per perfect competitive market we can see uh, we have seen that the prices are uniform and the output are sold at the same prices as a result the average revenue curve is perfectly elastic and it is horizontally parallel to the x axis which i have shown you and since the average revenue is constant like i said marginal revenue will also be constant so here uh, the graph which i have explained here is this is the price which is been taken from the market this pl is your demand curve which states that average revenue of the firm will be constant and because the average revenue curve is constant the marginal revenue curve will also be constant and the point where the marginal cost curve will cut your marginal revenue curve from below right this is how we represent the marginal cost curve if you guys remember we had our discussion in our uh, lecture where we have talked about marginal cost the marginal cost of any commodity initially reduces right as and when we add the additional unit of that commodity and then thereafter it started increases so the point where the marginal cost curve is cutting your marginal revenue curve from below that point is particularly known as equilibrium point and stated that this oq is the output which can be produced and sold at op price so that firm will be able to maximize its profit right so ar curve of the firm represents the demand curve of the product produced by the firm okay so here we have short run equilibrium first we will talk about firm's equilibrium in the short run right how firm is going to reach 
this equilibrium point in the short run because we always have this time period into consideration because we have uh, in short run we have two inputs some of the inputs are of fixed nature which cannot be changed right if even if we want to increase the size of output we cannot increase the change uh, we cannot bring the change to the inputs which are of fixed nature whereas long run is a consideration whereas where we have uh, we do not have any fixed input all the inputs are variable because in or in long run they are subject to change right so you can see that short run is a period in which the number of plant and size of the firms are fixed okay be keeping these inputs as a fixed input so in this period firm can only produce only by increasing the variable input right so this is one con uh, consideration which you have to understand to study about the short run equilibrium the first things which we are saying that here in short run we have fixed inputs as well as we have variable inputs okay and we can only make change in the variable inputs to increase the output these fixed inputs will remain fixed so and the second condition which we have to understand here is since this perfect competitive market says that the freedom is there to enter as well as freedom is there to exit from the market for sure this freedom is there but to understand this clearly we are talking right now about the short run equilibrium right so it is not easy for any seller to enter into this market in a short run as well as it is also not possible for any seller to exit from this market in the short run so what we are saying here as the entry of new firm or exit of the existing firm is not possible in the short run therefore the firms in the perfect competitive market can either earn super normal profit normal profit or they might can incur a loss so the players who are working under perfect competitive market in the short run they cannot go out of this market or they cannot enter into this market because of the short term period right the firms which are working in this particular zone of short run they can have three categories of margin that is super normal profit now super normal profit is one thing which you need to understand then they can also on normal profit and there are the firms which can incur the loss so the second point which i was writing here is in short run we have fixed inputs and variable input keeping this fixed uh, input uh, to be fixed we can only make changes to the variable input to increase the size of output one thing in the short run and in the second point we have discussed that no new firm can enter and no existing firm can exit right that is not possible again because of the time frame right now what is the super normal profit normal profit and loss super normal we say that the firm is earning super normal profit where the average revenue of firm is greater than the average cost okay if the revenue average revenue specifically we are not talking about the revenue and cost but here we are talking about the average revenue revenue per unit right if it is greater than the average cost of the company then a company is earning super normal profit right whereas normal profit is a consideration where the average revenue of the firm is equals to the average cost okay where the revenue and cost are equal then this is the situation of normal profit and this normal profit is required to run your basic uh, you know working conditions right here you are not considering yourself into a loss as well as not in profit so here you are earning equally and here your revenue will be equals to the cost whereas loss is a situation where your average revenue is uh, you know lesser than the average cost average cost is more here and the firm is uh, having lesser average revenue that means firm is running into losses and definitely it is difficult for any firm to survive into losses so maybe right now because of a shorter time frame they are not able to exit from the market but definitely in the longer run if they will continue with their losses they will leave the industry so i hope this short run equilibrium conditions are clear to every one of us where we have seen that because of the short run period we have fixed input and variable input and only variable inputs can be changed to increase the uh, output of the firm right secondly uh, no new firm can enter and no existing firm can exit from the market under perfect competition because of a shorter time frame so the firms which are working under the shorter uh, short period under this perfect competition can earn super normal profit normal profit or they might can incur a loss right so let us look at these condition 
when the firm will earn super normal profit how are we going to determine this firm's equilibrium right how we are going to understand it so here you can see on the x axis we are representing the quantity uh, sorry output and quantity you can say both and on the y axis we have revenue cost and price right revenue is the you know the revenue minus cost is the profit so how we are going to calculate the profit of a firm uh, working under this perfect competition and here we are representing the condition of super normal profit so guys you can see here we have already made our discussion up to this point that op is the price which we have taken from the market with the interaction of demand and supply and this pl is a average revenue curve represents the demand under this perfect competition so here in this perfect competition market we have seen that demand curve is perfectly elastic which is parallel to the x axis and this is how we calculate the average revenue and since the average revenue is constant therefore the marginal revenue curve will also be constant so here we have average revenue which is equals to the marginal revenue and how do we find out the equilibrium point just now we have studied that equilibrium point is the point where the marginal cost curve will cut your marginal revenue curve from below right and where the marginal revenue is equals to the marginal cost so you can see here we are denoting it with smc because this is the short run consideration we are talking about so here we have this short run marginal cost and you can see that at point e at point e this marginal cost curve is cutting the marginal revenue curve from below and the point e says that at this point the marginal revenue is equals to the marginal cost so particularly this e point is the equilibrium point for the firm a firm should ideally produce oq output uh, in this short run so op is the price taken from the market pl is the uh, demand curve which states that price uh, demand is perfectly elastic and since here the average revenue is constant marginal revenue uh, of the uh, firm is also be constant and here from marginal revenue cost which cut it which cuts the marginal revenue curve from below right and where the marginal revenue is equals to the marginal cost we have this equilibrium uh, you know quantity so oq quantity we should be producing because the firm is going to reach the equilibrium point at e level right now we to find out the super normal profit what we have done we have talked about this short run average cost since the super normal profit uh, you know condition is the condition where your average revenue is greater than average cost okay if your average revenue is greater than average cost then we call it as a condition of super normal profit so we have seen that this is our average cost curve and we have also seen that average cost curve is always of u shape right this we have already discussed and it is the cost which comes out with the average fixed cost and average variable cost if you remember average cost is equals to average fixed cost of the company and average variable cost right and it will always be of u shape and why it is of u shape that relationship also we have studied right because average fixed cost always decreases as in when we increase the size of our output our average fixed cost curve will always decline and it is a shape of a rectangular hyperbola right why because initially there is a more decrease in the average fixed cost and later on it decreases with the diminishing rate whereas average variable cost of a product is again of u shaped initially it reduces and thereafter it started increases and because of which the average cost curve is of u shape right so here you can see that uh, we have this average cost uh, curve short run average cost curve now to calculate this super normal profit what we are seeing op is the price at which the product is been sold and oq is the output which they are selling so you can see that eq is the uh, you know average revenue curve eq is this this much of revenue a firm is earning because this represents the average revenue of the firm and to produce this oq output if we are talking about the cost fq is the cost right so what we are saying here if i'll explain it to you clearly to make it uh, understanding uh, for you so what we are saying eq is the average revenue of the firm and fq is the average cost right so you can easily see eq is the average revenue of the firm and fq is the average cost of the firm and to calculate the profit what do we do we deduct uh, you know 
we minus uh, this profit to calculate the profit of the firm average revenue minus average cost we will be able to find out the profit right so this is the revenue and this is the cost so this ef is the profit per unit okay so the difference between eq and fq is ef right so this is the profit per unit right so when we multiply this per unit profit with the total output because we are going to find out the total profit of the firm so here we have made this multiplication and we can say that this area f h uh, p e is your super normal profit area right the firm is able to earn profit because here the revenue is more than the cost okay so i hope it is clear to every one of you how we are calculating this super normal profit in the short run by looking at the consideration the prices the output the equilibrium point in the uh, firm where the firm is going to reach out the equilibrium point with the interaction of these firm we have calculated the average revenue and the average cost and the difference between average revenue and average cost is the profit right so this ef is the uh, profit per unit and when we multiply this per unit profit with the total output then we will be able to find out the super normal profit of the firm okay so now we have talked about this super normal profit condition and here we have this explanation of super normal profit which we have already discussed uh, like what we are representing on the x axis and how we are finding out the equilibrium point so one thing which you need to remember here is equilibrium point uh, firm will reach where the marginal revenue curve will cut your marginal cost uh, sorry marginal cost curve will cut your marginal revenue curve from below so here you, it is written here the firm is in equilibrium at the point e where marginal revenue is equals to the marginal cost and the marginal cost curve is cutting your marginal revenue curve from below right so that point is the equilibrium point which will help you to understand how much output a firm should produce under the perfect competition in the short run okay and then we have seen the difference between the average revenue and the average cost so if the revenue average revenue of the firm is greater than the average cost that particular situation would be considered to be a normal super normal profit uh, you know condition right here the firm is earning super normal profit so this is already known to every one of you how we have calculated this area h f e p in this graph now looking further we have this short run normal profit okay as we have seen that the firms working under perfect competition in the short run they can either earn super normal profit or they can earn normal profit or they might can incur a loss right so first condition we have already seen how the firms are earning super normal profit in the short run let us look at the graph where if a firm is earning only normal profit and if you remember i have told you normal profit is a condition where the average revenue of the firm will be equals to the average cost now again we have output on the x axis and we have revenue cost and price on the y axis i believe you are able to understand it clearly now from where we have taken this op price this op price has been taken with the interaction of market forces that is demand and supply and we have this perfectly elastic demand curve here we are representing it with pl pl is the demand uh, curve of this uh, you know perfect competitive market and the demand generates the revenue so here we are representing the average revenue and since the average revenue of the firm is constant marginal revenue will also be constant there is no change in average revenue so the marginal revenue will always be equal to the average revenue and now if you look at this marginal cost right to find out this equilibrium point we need to see where the marginal cost curve is cutting your marginal revenue curve so here we are representing this short run marginal cost curve and this is the point where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost and this marginal cost curve is cutting it from below right so again with this equilibrium point we are saying that oq is the output which a firm should produce right now to produce oq output how much cost a company is incurring right so earlier case was the super normal profit case and where we know the average revenue is greater than the average cost therefore we have drawn the average cost curve below this average revenue curve right but now as because we are representing the condition of normal profit and at normal profit we have average revenue which is equals to the average cost so here the average cost curve will 
touch your average revenue curve right so you can see here this average cost curve is going to touch your average revenue curve and you can see that this is the point again at point e your average revenue is equals to the average cost so particularly what we are saying at point e we have marginal revenue equals to the marginal cost and similarly at point e which is an equilibrium point our average revenue is also equals to the average cost right which states that the firm uh, which is earning the normal profit is having the same average revenue as well as average cost and this is the minimum uh, you know return a company or a firm is expecting to run out its operation because we are not considering the situation of a super normal profit where the firm is earning more or there where the firm is also incurring any loss right this is the condition where firm can uh, you know have their existence in the market because they are earning that much where they are able to meet out their cost right so this is how we explain super no, you know normal profit in the short run right so i believe this is clear to every one of you there is no profit and there is no loss to it right again here we have the explanation given uh, for this super no, you know normal profit curve which i have already explained to you okay where we have seen how we have taken the prices from the market how we have represented the demand curve average revenue curve and the marginal revenue curve with this pl point right and we have also calculated the equilibrium point while understanding where the marginal revenue curve is equals to the marginal cost curve right and as we know this is a normal profit condition so therefore the, our average revenue will be equals to the average cost so we will draw the average cost curve where it is going to touch your average revenue right so here in this graph you can see to produce oq output eq is the uh, you know average revenue and eq is the cost right so when average revenue is equals to the average cost it will represent the condition of normal profit right so now let us move further where we can see how we represent the losses in the short run because the firms are either earning super normal profit or they might can earn normal profit or they might can incur a loss right so here we are representing the condition where firms are incurring the loss so again the same explanation because the graph will remain same only there will be a change in average cost curve right so to remember this one thing when we are talking about this perfect competitive market and we are representing the different conditions right where the firm is earning super normal profit normal profit or they are incurring the loss the only change you are going to make in the average cost curve right keeping into uh, consideration that average cost will be lesser than average revenue in the case of super normal profit it will be same with the average cost in case of normal profit and here you can see the average cost curve will shift upward right because here the cost is more we are representing the loss condition so here the average revenue curve will be below and from this side we are going to draw this uh, you know short run average cost curve so again ox uh, on the x axis we are representing the output and on the y axis we have revenue cost as well as price this op is the price taken from the market forces and this pa line denotes your demand curve and with this demand you are getting the revenue which is constant which makes your average uh, marginal revenue also constant and here with the help of this short run marginal cost we have taken this equilibrium point again we are denoting it with e for your understanding so here the firms will reach up to the equilibrium equilibrium point where the firm is going to produce oq output now to produce this oq output the average revenue is eq right because this is the average line average uh, curve okay so this eq is the average revenue whereas the average cost of the company is fq right so fq is the average cost because this is the average cost curve so we have taken this fq as an average cost of the company and since we can see the cost average cost is greater than average revenue because fq is greater than eq and the difference between fq and eq is your loss so this fe point denotes the loss of the company and this is the loss which they are incurring per proper unit right this is the loss per unit now when we multiply this per unit loss with the total output then we will be able to find out the total loss area of this firm in the short run so this 
P H E F is the total loss which a firm is un, in, uh, you know incurring in the long run, right? So these are the three conditions which we have to understand, and this happens because of as we know that the firms working under perfect competition in short run. there are some fixed inputs and there are some variable inputs so fixed inputs uh, will remain fixed we cannot make changes to these inputs so whatever the change we want to bring into the output we bring it with the variable input by varying the variable input and secondly we have seen that in short run as because of the shorter time frame no new firm will be able to enter into the industry and no existing firm will exit from the industry so remaining firm operating under perfect competition can earn super normal profit normal profit or they might can incur a loss and the conditions we have discussed here the only thing which you have to understand here is how we are going to represent the average cost curve under this market so here again we have the explanation of the loss i i believe this is clear to every one of you as we have discussed it and we have understood it how are we going to calculate the loss under this condition right so now let us move further to understand the long run equilibrium since the firm has to operate in the short run as well as in the long run so what is the difference between the short run equilibrium and how the firm is going to reach in the long run right and what will be the considerations uh, there in the long run okay so you can call it as in long run equilibrium also or you can say that how we are determining the price and output in the long run so again there are few things which we need to remember the very first point says that in long run all factors are variable now as because we have enough time right we can make changes to our fixed inputs also fixed inputs are only fixed in a shorter period right because of the time frame we are not able to change them but because now we are talking about the long run since we have enough time and plan uh, long run is also a planning horizon where we can change our situation we can think of bringing new things so here no factor will be or no input will be of fixed nature all the inputs are of variable nature we can bring change to all the inputs so what we are saying all factors are variable here and secondly firm can increase their output by increasing the number of plants and size of the plant right because earlier in the short run we have kept these as a fixed input we were not able to increase the size of the plant or the number of plants because they were considered to be as a fixed input in the short run but now in the long run if the firm is planning to increase their firm plant size or they want to introduce new plant to their uh, business then they can easily do it and the again most important aspect for the long run consideration is in the long run as because this is again an important feature of perfect competition ma competitive market that there is a freedom of entry and exit right firms working under the long run can easily enter and exit the market because there is no restriction in this market but just because of a time frame in the short run they were not able to enter and exit but here in the long run any new seller can enter and any existing seller can exit from the market right so these are the conditions which we need to keep here in our consideration before we talk about long run equilibrium right all factors are of fixed nature uh, variable nature there will be no fixed factor right and the firm can increases the plant sizes or the number of plants in their business because we have enough time and lastly we have seen that any new firm can enter into the market and any existing firm will exit from the market now with these three conditions what will happen in the long run the firms which are operating in the long run under profit competitive market they will only earn normal profit right so one thing which makes the change here is firm working or operating under perfect competitive market in the long run will only earn normal profit there will not be a condition of super normal profit and no firm is going to earn loss here why it is so that discussion we will also make in this particular class itself so let us see how we are going to represent this long run equilibrium where the firms are earning only normal profit so as it is written here also as a result the existing firm will only earn normal profit in the long run so here uh, the reasons are why the firms are not earning super normal profit in the long run and why the firms are not incurring losses as well so if the existing firms earn super normal profit uh, the firms which are were operating in the short run 
because of which they were earning the super normal profit. Now, what will happen? The firms which were earning super normal profit in the normal, uh, you know, in the short run, they will increase their production by increasing the number of plant. Definitely, if you are earning good in your business, you will always try to expand the size of your business and you want to uh, make it bigger, right? So, the firms which were operating in the short run and were earning super normal profit, they will increase the size of their business, they will expand their capacity and uh, you know they will try to make their business bigger. And what will happen? This will also attract new suppliers to the industry because if in any industry people are earning super normal profit and there is a scope, there is a demand in the market, then definitely new firms will enter into the industry and they will compete with the existing firms. Now, because of this, what will happen? As a result, the output produced will increase because the existing people who are earning super normal profit, they have increased their production and new suppliers were also added to the industry. So, they have also started produce, uh, you know, started produ uh, their production. So, therefore, the production will increase, the output will increase and because of increase in the output, what will happen? The total output increases where the demand of factors of production will increase, definitely. Because when you are producing more, you will be demanding more of factors of production. You would be needing more land, more money, more capital, more people, right? So, the demand for factors of production will increase and because of increase in the demand of production, their price will increase, right? The things which were earlier available to you at lesser prices, now their price will increase, which will increase your cost of production, right? So, what we are understanding here is the firms which were earning super normal profit in the short run, they will expand their size of business and will attract new firms to the industry because of which the total output will increase and to increase this output, the demand for factors of production will increase, right? And when their demand will increase, definitely their price will go up and which will increase the cost of production. So, to understand here why the firms operating in the long run will only earn normal profit because of these reasons, right? Because their profit margin will reduce and as we already know that the firms in the perfect competitive market are not the price maker, they are the price takers. So, they have no choices, they cannot increase the price even if the cost of production increases. So, what they will do? Uh, they, they just have to reduce their profit margin, they are not left with any choices, right? So, supply of the product increases, again the output will be more, so supply will again uh, more in the market which is again going to reduce the price. So, a double effect will be there, right? Firstly, your cost of production is increasing because of more output and secondly, when there will be more supply in the market, then again it is reducing the cost, keeping the demand same or lesser change in the demand. When supply will be more, then the forces will work in the opposite direction and that will decrease the price. So, the demand remaining the same and when the supply of the product increases, the price of the product comes down, hence the average revenue will also reduces will come down. So, a fall in the average revenue and rise in the average cost will continue till they both becomes equal, right? So, this is how the firms operating in the long run will reach to the point where their average revenue will be equals to average cost and which explains that the firms operating in the long run will only earn normal profit, right? So, this happens when the firm is earning super normal profit. Now, looking at the second condition, when the firms were incurring loss in the short run, right? What happens to those firms or to those players who were making or incurring the losses in the short run? What will happen? Some firm uh, will exit from the market because they were making losses. So, some existing firm will decrease their production by decreasing the number of plant because they were not able to afford it because of their losses. So, here they are going to reduce their capacity, right? They will, uh, you know, reduce their production capacity because there is not much demand in the market or they might not able to cover up the losses which they are incurring. So, they reduce their capacity, they decrease their size of plants and some existing firms will leave the industry, okay? 
uh, if they are not able to maintain it uh, any more then definitely they will not be left with any choice they will leave the industry. So, now what will happen as a result the output produced will decrease. So, this will definitely decrease the output because the existing firm have reduced their production capacity and those who were already there in the market they also leave the industry. So, what will happen here is the total output decreases and the demand for factors of production will decrease now right. When demand of factors of production will decrease then there will be a decrease in the price of factors and this will lead to decrease in the average cost. So, their average cost will decrease and the supply of product will decrease and the demand remaining the same when the supply of the product decreases the price of the product will go up ok. So, hence you can say that average revenue will go up and a rise in the average revenue and falls in the average cost will continue till the points they be both become equal right. So, again the firms operating in the long run will reach up to the point where their average revenue will be equal to the average cost because of the reduction in the total output and the reduction in the uh, you know supply of the, the total firm this will reach up to the point where the average revenue and average cost of the firm will remain same. Right. So, therefore, we are saying the perfect competitive firms will only earn normal profit in the long run. So, the conditions which we are having in the short run of super normal profit what happens there that we have understood well and how this uh, the firms who were incurring the loss in the short run will behave in the long run that considerations also we have studied. So, we are left with only one condition here in the long run the firms will reach up to that normal profit and they will only be incurring normal. Uh, normal profit. So, here this is how we represent the long run consideration of the firm working in the long run ok representing the normal profit because there will be no firm who is earning super normal profit and there will be no firm who is also incurring the loss. The firms which will remain will only earn normal profit. So, again on the x axis we have output right and on the y axis we are representing revenue cost and price and since we are talking about long run. So, here we are representing this marginal cost as an LMC that represents this is the long run marginal cost curve and this is the long run average cost curve and we have seen that normal profit is a condition where the average revenue of the firm is equals to the average cost. So, OPE again is the price taken from the market right and PL is uh, the demand curve which is uh, you know perfectly elastic represents to you in the form of PL and then when the demand is perfectly elastic your average revenue will be constant and when average revenue is constant marginal revenue will also be constant. So, what we are going to locate we are going to find out this equilibrium point and equilibrium point is the point where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost right and where the marginal cost curve will cut your marginal revenue from below. So, this is the point where we are reaching our equilibrium point because at this point we are uh, you know having this marginal revenue is equals to marginal cost and since this is the condition of normal profit. So, where our average revenue will be equals to the average cost. So, this is our long run average cost curve. So, you can see for the production of OQ output the cost is EQ and the revenue is also EQ. So, average revenue of the firm is EQ and average cost of the firm is also EQ right which is equal. Okay. So, here we have uh, this normal profit consideration in the long run right. So, I believe this is clear to every one of you how we are determining the price and output or how we are going to uh, reach out the equilibrium point in the short run as well as in the long run right. This is the explanation which I have already discussed with you all. I hope it is clear the explanation which we have done where the point E says that LMC is equals to MR and AR stating that in the long run the firms are earning normal profit. So, if we uh, you know recollect what we have covered in our session today we have a perfect competitive market where we have tried to find out where the firm is going to reach their equilibrium and how they are going to earn. So, we have short run considerations and we have long run considerations in, in, in the firm right. In short run we have seen that we have some inputs which are of fixed nature and we have some inputs which are of variable nature whereas in long run we have only variable inputs we can make change to all of them to increase the size of the output. In short run no new firm is able to enter and exit because of the shorter time frame 
whereas in long run any new firm can enter and any existing firm can exit right so the entry if you talk about entry and exit there is no entry and exit in the short run and there is entry and exit of the firms in the long run so based on these condition we are saying the firms working in the short run can earn super normal profit or the firms are earning normal profit also and some of the firms were also incurring the loss right super normal profit is where the average revenue is greater than the average cost normal profit where the average revenue is equals to the average cost and loss where the average revenue is lesser than the average cost right whereas the firms working in the long run under perfect uh, competition they will only earn normal profit right they will only earn normal profit because uh, the firms which were earning super normal profit in the short run will increase their existing capacity and will also invite new suppliers into the market which will increase the size of output and when the size of output will increase demand for factors of production will increase which will increase the cost of production and if the supply is increasing definitely uh, you know when supply is increasing and the price is also increasing cost is also increasing increase supply will increase the price in the market sorry reduce the price in the market and the cost is increasing so definitely a long run firm will reach to a point where they will only earn normal profit same happens to the firms which were incurring the loss right the firms which were incurring the loss in the short run in long run they will reduce their production capacity right and some of the firms will leave the industry so when the output will decrease when output will decrease definitely the cost of production will reduce right and when the demand you know then when the supply will be less the price will be high right because of the more demand and supply will be less price will increase and cost will decrease so again they will reach to the point where the firms are going to earn only normal profit so this continues to be happen till the point where their average revenue will be equals to the average cost right so this is how we understand the situation of the firms under the perfect competition in the short run as well as in the long run now very important aspect to be taken care of how are we going to make decisions when the firms are working under this perfect competitive market so let us look at the managerial implications of perfect competitive market the first point says that managers of these firm should be uh, you know capable of entering early as early they are they can enter into this market so if you are an early entrant right if you are taking the first mover advantage to enter into this perfect competitive market then you will be able to generate more profit as we have seen in the short run only firms are able to earn super normal profit whereas in long run if they will enter late into the market they will only be able to earn normal profit so manager should always try to enter into the perfect competitive market when the supply is low and the prices are high right so when the supply is low when there were few firms in the market then you should enter into this area uh, or, or this market structure so that you will be able to earn abnormal profit a super normal profit can also be called as abnormal profit somewhere so please don't get confused right you can denote it within abnormal profit also or we call it as in super normal profit okay and we can say that the firms were earning who were earning abnormal profit should remain ready yes it should not be that that manager should keep themselves uh, you know free that if they are earning super normal profit and they are earning very good so they should sit relax and there will be no problem to them in future definitely this is not going to happen if they are earning abnormal profit if they are earning good profit they should keep themselves ready because this will attract new suppliers into the market so they should always focus on reducing their cost and to do uh, bring something new to their business where they would be able to attract more profit from the market right so they should keep themselves always ready and make their calculations of how to reduce the cost and lastly we are saying as in perfect competitive market firm is a price taker right they are taking the prices from the market forces that is demand and supply so therefore to survive in the long run firm should be the amongst the lowest cost producer so for the survival of the firms in the perfect competitive market have to focus on the reduction of the cost on the continuous basis because this is the only area where they can work upon right they cannot increase or decrease the prices of their commodity they are taking the prices from the market so this is the only choice they are left with 
if they want to continue with their firm in the perfect competitive market, they should always focus on reducing the cost of their product, right. So, here if we review our topic for today's session, we have talked about the features of perfect competitive market, how we understood this market and what are the conditions needed to be understand. Then we have seen how prices are being determined, right, with the interaction of demand and supply, we determine the prices and whenever there will be a change in the demand and supply, the change in the price will take place. And then we have understood this short run equilibrium. Short run equilibrium represents the case of super normal profit, normal profit and the losses, whereas we have also understood the condition of long run equilibrium, where we have only studied the case of normal profit as the firms working in the long run will only earn normal profit. So, this is all for today's class. Let us look at the reference books, the material from where uh, the context has been taken up. That is all for today. Thank you all of you.